after the management cycle, we, ca we come to, to, uh, to draft the conceptual model, which is one of the points which were, uh, which were listed at, uh, under number one of the management cycle. The conceptual model is a diagram representing a set of, of casual relationships between factors that are believed to impact one or more key targets for conservation. It links, it gives a, a indication on what are the links of key targets to the pressure impacting them and in case drivers influen influencing the pressures and the strategic activities being taken to affect those factors. This diagram will also indicate paths along which strategic acti activities can be used to change or positively influence these relationships. So we have, at this, time we have, at this point, we have the conservation targets, pressures, drivers, and activities. These activities are there to influence in a positive way, pressure and drivers affecting the key targets for conservation. Don't tell me, Mira Mare. Our conceptual model portrays graphically the situation in the MPA and provides the basis for determining where to intervene with strategic activities. Where to intervene with strategic activities. This is the key point. Why we have decided to do that activity. This is in a graphic way. So this is the explanation, explanation you provide for people asking you, what are you doing with this? What are you pushing small-scale small fishermen out of your protected area, for instance. And each of these box has its own explanation provided in the management plan. Why conceptual models are important? This is a visual method of capturing what is happening in one side and where to intervene to affect casual relations relationships. Because it traces back to the logical flow of influence, it can allow, allow partners and stakeholders to see how they are able to play an active role in conservation. I can question a, f uh, a fisherman with my diagram, hey man, what are you doing? Yes, this, 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 this links and gives you the situation and why you are acting, why you are asking for more protection, uh, allowing or not allowing certain activities. Most important, conceptual models are a powerful tool for workshops with partners and local stakeholders. It is a graph everybody can understand and it provides in one graph the vision of the situation the diagram of the situation, and it, it gives the explanation on why you are doing the, this kind of work. When to use it. As you select your biodiversity targets, once you have selected the biodiversity targets, there is the moment to develop the conceptual model. Key targets of conservation can change a long time. For instance, we have lost, at Miramare, we, we have lost, we have no longer, uh, we have never had Posidonia, and we have lost Simodosia and Odosa, Meadows. And these were, these were uh, well, uh, in fact, we were working, trying to work a lot. We never made restoration. We were not, uh, the, the, the former management, were, uh, we were not keen to try restoration of uh, Simodosia, uh, Midos. Anyhow, 
it is no longer, uh, it is no longer uh, a, uh, a key target for conservation. So this is, uh, this is why a conceptual model has to be, uh, has to be, uh, to, to be kept updated. And uh, it, we have been trying, well, to monitor what was the situation, what, how was the situation evolving. We made several efforts. No, uh, uh, no transplantation. We were not believing on this uh, tool at the time. But anyhow, it is no longer, uh, uh, it is no longer in uh, our uh, management uh, goals, and uh, it is no longer a key target for conservation. This is why the conceptual model can change a long time. It should capture the pressures, the drivers, and the opportunities. They are links one to the other, and how they influence the targets. Second point, conceptual model is useful to help develop interventions Leading, leading to the desired impact upon the biodiversity target. We have seen in the previous slide, it is a tool to communicate with partners and stakeholders, and it is a tool to develop inter interventions. And now, how to develop a conceptual model? Step one, scope and vision. What is the project scope? A project scope defines what the project intends to affect. We always talk in this case of place-based projects. These have a geographic scope and include efforts to conserve effectively managed ecoregions, priority areas, or protected areas. It is also necessary to decide on a clear and common vision a description of the desired state or ultimate condition that you, are that you are working to achieve. Step two, the targets. Key targets for conservation are added to the scope area. And this is the box you always get on the right of the conceptual model. The project scope the definition of the broad parameters of the project, usually it overlaps with the marine protected area. The vision and each of the conservation targets. Specific biodiversity species, ecosystems, or ecological processes chosen to represent the overall biodiversity of a site or the focus of a thematic project. We uh, to, to, be, to be clear and efficient, we usually do not work on more than six to eight key targets for conservation. Step number three, context and stakeholders. It is the way to graph, to represent how the threats are influencing by the, the biodiversity targets and who some of the actors behind these different factors are. You got the pressures, the drivers, but also the opportunities. Two definitions, what we understand by pressure, a human action that immediately degrade one or more conservation targets. For example, logging or fishing. It can also be natural phenomena alterated by human activities. For instance, increase or in extreme storm events due to climate change. Typically tied to one or more stakeholders. The drivers, the underlying causes that triggers the pressure. This is the entry point for conservation actions. For instance, logging policies or demand for fish. Now we have a lot of yellow, pink, and orange boxes. Let's add the yellow boxes. Once we determine what has to be accomplished, the goals, then we need to think about 
the need, what needs to be done, strategies and activities, or strategic activities. This involves the term, determining where and how we'll intervene. In fact, what is the management plan? It is listing all the action or strategies which have been developed and providing the relevant indication, time frame, the agenda, the need of personnel, the need of means, and the budget. This is the management plan. Once you decided, after the conceptual model, once you decided what will be your action uh, strategy, strategic action, what you will do, the management plan collects the relevant information linked to the actions you intend to develop. Again, who? The personal, human needs, collaborations. Where and when? Means needed, vehicles, scuba gear, whatever. And the budget, the two different points, activity and strategy. Activity, it is a small action most of the time in the real world we are able to develop activities. Strategies is a set of activities which is much broader. Let me check if I can retrieve an example. It was the case in Greece uh, well, deploying, deploying uh, mooring buoys or restoring Posidonia meadows. Restoring Posidonia meadows can be a strategy. Deploying mooring buoys is an action. And most of the time we have the power, the funding for starting one or a, couple, a few actions instead of, of a whole strategy. For instance, this is the chain linking the, the target, in this case forest, to the action uh, provided. This, this, was, this is the, the pressure, the, the, the threat, the, 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 the cause and the, the, the pressure and the activity developed. Then, after we develop the conceptual model, I already anticipated before, we have the action plan. Most important, the activities to be undertaken. It is part of the management plan. This is the scope, marine site, and this is the strategy, campaign to stop shark fin soup. These are the actions which will be developed. And for each action, we, we see progress, who, when, work units, project expenses, and budget tools. This is how we develop the management plan after the conceptual model. Our everyday activities um, and uh, the, uh, the results we are providing are influenced by the management plan. We, we have seen the theory which is behind, which lays behind the management plan, and I will try to make you understand what uh, the management plan, how the management plan, in fact, is the backbone of the activities of, every, uh, of the of, uh, of our everyday work and the results we deliver. These are, this is the situation, the working situation we are facing with the management of our protected area. A couple of constraints you have to consider, which is a limitation that a single MPA cannot have its own staff. 
this is limitation issued by the Minister of Environment, which does not want, in Italy, MPAs having their own staff. Staff has to be provided by local work. And this is why we have Shoreline Cooperative working in Miramare. Minister of Environment doesn't want to take charge of the personal working in the marine protected areas. It does with the personal working in the national parks. There are public employees, but MPA personnel are not public employees. Miramar employs either trusters and consultants, cooperative shoreline, this is me, or temporary workers. In our case, WWF has several conventions and protocols with local authorities and institutions which are providing support in kind collaboration, in kind support, personal for a short time or and it collaborates with OGS, Department of Biological Oceanography of the National Institute of Oceanography and Applied Geophysics. This is the, the frame for the personal working in the marine protected area. And the fact of having no direct personal, it is a huge constraint. You will hate this diagram. Uh, and th this was drafted from Miradi. Miradi is drafting the, 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 this kind of diagram and providing all the database where I showed you before. But now, let's see in detail how each of these seven strategies we have been developing until 2018 comes in the everyday activities and in the results we are providing. These are uh, we will discuss later, after the coffee break, we will discuss about a slight changing I'm trying to uh, insert in the new edition of the ISDA scheme. These are conservation strategies, and we have two strategies which nowadays I would name, instead of conservation strategies, I would name institutional strategies, which are which are taking into consideration the governance needs of the protected area instead of the biological needs. Well, let me get immediately to the point. We will return on it. On it. Conceptual model, Miradi and whatsoever, are only focused on biological targets. In fact, managing an MPA has also to consider governance of the own of the own MPA of the MPA itself. I mean, having similar constraints on the personnel, or having any other need. Most of of them are fundraising. This is a need. You have to, to consider it. It is not directly linked, but if you do not have these kind of institutional strategies, the whole machine stops. But the, the, these strategies are not linked. It is hard to link them directly to biological targets. Then I would separate, and this is why in, in the edition, draft edition you have, uh, our, I provided you with, you have this kind of separation among conservation strategies, which all come after Miradi, conceptual model, and blah, 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 and a set of institutional strategies which, which come after consideration of governance need of the own, of the single MPA. It is hard to mix, to, to put what is, in fact, your basic need of fundraising to, to merge it, to sneak it, to, to, to find a way to link it to the conservation of a biodiversity target. It is clear that without these two institutional strategies, you could not work at all. The whole apparatus would stop. 
this is why uh, I'm trying to separate the, 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 two, the two sets of conservation, of strategies. Conservation strategies that come after the conceptual model developed the way we have seen before, and institutional strategies which come after, for instance, a SWOT analysis, which is indicating uh, strength and weaknesses in, 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 the, in, in the management of the protected, protected data, which relate to the governance of the protected data and not to biological targets. Let's, go back, let's get back to our example on how, how the strategies we are, we've been working during three, we, three years are behind the results we are, we, we are bringing in light. So these are the pressures and the drivers. And we have five over seven strategies, which are conservation strategies, which are tackling the situation which is giving a risk to our key targets for conservation. At first, uh, ordinary, uh, this is the name uh, provided by the, mini, uh, by the Minister of the Environment, Funzionamento Ordinario. Uh, this is the, uh, the um, basic, uh, the fundamental expenditure which comes after uh, the calculation of uh, Sodecri and whatsoever, and it covers personal uh, uh, maintenance and uh, all the office costs of the MPA. Then do not consider it linked to biological targets. Strategy number two, education and, well, well, environmental education in some way. It triggers two drivers, low information and lacking of, of good education, which is linked to these pressures, professional fishing, uh, pressure coming from the garden behind the marine protected area, pleasure boating, visitors that do not consider the regulations inside the protected area, In poaching, illegal fishing. Uh, we have two kind of uh, fishing, which is not uh, professional fishing. We name uh, sport fishing and pleasure fishing. Sport fishing are uh, professional which, which are without license, professional fishermen without license. Well, they, they, I, uh, I mean uh, mostly uh, people which uh, practice uh, spare fishing and then resell the fish. And uh, pleasure fishing is the uh, retired person fishing from the boat just to pass a couple of hours at sea. Linked to this act, act strategy, we have the objectives which, were, which are stated in the management plan and it comes to develop all these activities. Behind the second strategy, we have trips along the promontory, nature trips shared between sea and uh, karst, karst region, pesca tourism activity, sea watching, and diving activity. They are all developed under strategy number two. Our former uh, site, we were, we were be, uh, working in these offices uh, until uh, the end of 
2017, then we have to move away from, from the office. We are in another site nowadays. And this is a tool provided with education facilities, awareness facilities, open to the, to the public, visitors and school children. The activity developed for the school children, for sure during summertime, interpretative activity, going and having explanation on, of what they see underwater. All these activities, as they are done with young children, they need professional persons getting close to them and providing an explanation and having an eye on the local conditions and uh, on the safety of the activity. And even not only education, then you, you have to consider and then write what you have seen on the water and so on. You, we also run uh, activities with just for the fun of, of going uh, sea watching and turning around. This is always part of strategy number two. Learning, this is done with the, during the activity of the schools. They come on site and have uh, ex uh, exercises concerning, well, identification of species living in the sand and mud on the soft bottoms, or some ex explanation of on the seawater quality, guided tours by boat, considering well what they see from the what they see from the sea, the explanation of of the territory. The activity we name manjo comes I heat, I use resources, I understand, and I preserve resources. Well, I eat, I consume, understand, and preserve. These are the, this is done with fishermen and in the fish market. After the, after the fish, we, we make them understand the way it is catched, the area it is, it is catching, the season, if it is good or not for the reproduction of that kind of fish, and if, the, if it is local fish or if it comes from far away. We name it Marine Ecological Footprint. And this is my colleague, Maurizio, the director of Miramare, teaching how to cook fish, focused on the pesce povero, poor fish. Poor fish is the poor species, the, the, the one which are, which are never taken into consideration, the discards. Uh, we do not provide lessons on the wine. It is not our task. This is uh, pesca turismo, in, our, in this case it is done with mussel farmers. As we have a lot of mussel farming around Miramare, we make the, the activity with these kind of breeders instead of fishermen. And all, but also, well, uh, this is taken in a, uh, at night with lampara, uh, lampara fishing activities. Of course, this is, this is at night, we can only bring adults, not school children. But in case it is done in the, uh, by daytime, we can also bring school children to visit a fishing activity taking place in, at day. This is all part of strategy two. Again, same activity, well, clean up our beaches and counting, waiting, and considering the, the, the source of, uh, my, uh, of marine debris coming at shore, making awareness of, on what we find at sea. Strategy number three, enforcement. Again, the drivers and the pressures on our biodiversity targets, for sure, zoning plan, but enforcement provided by the port authority. And we have two times per year, we have a, a, a meeting with the port police 
uh, which is uh, uh, we, which is organized by the Minister of Environment. We are asked to meet twice per year in order to, uh, uh, to, to, in order to uh, ensure the collaboration of port police to the enforcement of the marine protected area. As they receive, port, uh, the port police receives part of the funding directly from the Minister of Environment to do this work. Instead of providing the MPA with funds, the Minister of Environment takes part of the funds dedicated to MPA to pay port police to do enforcement. But then we are there to control their work and provide indication for being more effective. Part of the work we are de developing, this is the boat provided by the Minister of Environment for cleaning the sea inside and in the, in the surroundings of the MPA. Again, uh, sensitivization towards fishermen. Why we have two times the same, the same uh, picture? Because on one side it is educating the children, on the other side, reverse, you can consider educating fishermen, which he which sees the children and the young generation, and trying to get him a little bit more conscious about the fact that there are f further generation of young people which need the sea. Strategy number four, monitoring, biological and physical monitoring of the environment. This is monitoring device, which is one of the buoys of Miramare. Uh, equipped with uh, monitoring instruments for the quality of the seawater. It is managed by, uh, it is managed by uh, the nation, uh, National Institute of Oceanography and we provide collaboration. We, we have access to the data and we provide with them collaboration for the, uh, for the maintenance of the device. Nowadays we have some 10 years of, of data coming from the buoy and collected and record, recorded. And this is part of the network, which also has buoys from Piran and Rovigno Institutes. We share the data, we, we have access to the data collected by OGS and recording the trends of several parameters, in this case, temperature. We made, until the time we had Chimodocha, we made recording, visual census, we work with uh, uh, other partners on uh, on uh, specific EU projects for the restoration of benthic communities. So we are monitoring and also providing the site for collaborating to scientific research aiming at restoring ecological habitats. In this case, we collaborate also with Strunyan, which is the marine protected area nearby, for the Sistoseira, where we are picking juveniles or, uh, and reallocating uh, them in areas which, were, which are presently missing of, that, uh, of this species. Mapping, seabed mapping, and update the seabed mapping is another of the activities under strategy number four. Seabed mapping and comparison inside, outside the protected area on the fish population, where we find the difference on fish population, density, and size, medium size, of several species within the protected area, the red, 
and outside. There are species which prefer staying outside, having, a more, having more disturbances than other species preferring, clearly preferring staying inside the protected area. Always on the strategy number four, we, uh, by the control of the disturbance of scuba diving activity. Scuba diving activity me means frequentation. We have a high number of scuba divers because we need money. We need them to pay the ticket for entering the reserve, but at the same time, we risk to bring disturbance to fish population. And this is typically an exercise of carrying capacity. How much money you can ask for scuba to come visiting a marine reserve without feeling to be in a bus fitted by scuba divers. And they also want to see fish and not scuba divers. And fish has to remain there for the next time, for the next visit. This is a very difficult point of balance between exploitation and conservation. And each year, we make consideration on how many scuba divers to allow next year after the results of monitoring the disturbance we bring with scuba divers. We track, we record the presence of dolphins or other species, important species. But this is apart from our activity. They come, we, we record. Helping, providing some help with sea turtle. Strategy number five, networking among MPAs. What we are doing with other MPAs, being part of the national network, and of the uh, also other marine protected areas, mostly from uh, Croatia and Slovenia, where we, we've been talking about live projects. And being part of the Man and Biosphere Reserves, Miramar is part of the UNESCO Man and Biosphere Reserves, we also provide some information and keep activity on the behalf of this network. While this is the area under the Ministry of Environment, the buffer area under the Port Police Authority, and the wider area declared as Biosphere Reserve, in the Man and Biosphere UNESCO Convention. Strategy day number six, uh, it is the, uh, it is the uh, effects of uh, sharing, the, uh, sharing the, the effects of conservation. Well, this is being part of other networks, for instance, networks with local, uh, local uh, activities uh, brought by the Chamber of Commerce and the evaluation of the services provided by conservation. Well, for instance, a few kilos of fishing, uh, of fish, uh, the same resource, fished and kept out of the MPA could be valued among 400 and 500 years, picking the fish which is visited by scuba divers, you get once on the market for 500 euros, while we get 6,000 euros each year by visiting activities which are seeing the same amount of kilos of fish which have been picked by the fishermen. This is to say we earn more from, from live fish they're not, by, they're not from fished fish. 
it is worthy to keep it alive and producing, producing 6,000 uh, 6, euro, uh, 6, euros per year instead of lay, laying, picking it and selling it for five to five, to, from four to five year, uh, hundred euros. By uh, money, this is generic monitoring activity and the evaluation of ecosystem services. And then the outer strategy, strategy number seven, which is governance, a governance problem. Governance problems which considers all the facilities, the beach, the harbor of the castle, the area for uh, marine activities for young people, the former office, the new office, and our boat uh, facilities inside the small port of Grignano. Budget, you have seen it in detail, and self-financing. Well, this was to explain how the, manage the management plan lays as backbone for the whole activities. I, I've, I've presented some picture, describe uh, some description of the activity we are running on an everyday basis, but how the management plan lays behind and gives indication on what to do, how to report, and how to get the money from the Minister of Environment.